Good afternoon, church. I'm excited to present to you a three-part Advent season uh, video series. These videos are going to be short, uh, but they're just a little devotional thought to help center our minds on what's most important this holiday season. That, of course, being the birth of Christ. These three movements will guide us today, tomorrow, and the following day through the birth of Christ. While you're with your family in the midst of the holiday season, I hope you take just a couple of minutes and listen to these to get our hearts and our minds wrapped around how truly beautiful this moment is, this time of reflection on Christ. The first of these three movements is entitled Anticipation. Anticipation. One of the things the Advent season has always been about is anticipation. For thousands of years before um, the birth of Jesus, the Jews waited desperately and hopefully for the Messiah King to come, like that of David, to bring them back to glory and power and sovereignty and protection, to give them freedom, to give them hope, to give them meaning, to give them purpose. And in all of these things, what we have is the promise of a coming king who is going to reinstate the power of Israel once again. And if you listen to the prophets, you can listen even thousands of years later, centuries later, you can still hear the hope and the joy in their voices as they talk about this coming king. The anticipation that comes from knowing that their savior is on the way, that their Messiah is coming soon. Isaiah chapter 51, 52, and 53 present a lot of paintings and pictures of what Jesus is going to be, a lot of hope. But it concludes with this passage in Isaiah chapter 55. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. See, this right here is the hope. The hope of the Messiah. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what is not satisfied? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen and you live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love, promised to David. Skipping down just a bit, he says, says Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. For my thought, um, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. The hope of the Messiah is seen in this, that those who have nothing can have everything, that those who are poor can become rich, that those who are hungry can find food, and those who are thirsty can find water. And all of us, the righteous and the unrighteous, can find pardon freely given by this coming Messiah King. The Isaiah is anticipating these words as he's looking out on a nation that is so wicked, and he's looking at people who are starving, the oppressed, who have nothing. And in this moment, he's anticipating the Savior. He's anticipating Jesus. The anticipation of the coming king is something that motivated the Jews to always look ahead for when that Messiah comes. But when Jesus came, he didn't end anticipation. In fact, he just heightened it more. He was getting us ready to anticipate his coming again. During this Advent season, it's impossible for us to not, not only look at the anticipation of the coming of Jesus thousands of years ago, but the anticipation of the coming Jesus now. As we as Christians wait and groan like the Israelites with joy and anticipation, look ahead to when Christ comes back. Listen to John's words. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I'm coming soon. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Amen. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. Come, Lord Jesus, come. John, as he's sitting on the Isle of Patmos, is in complete isolation. He had been tortured. Um, the early church fathers write that he'd been dipped in tar before he was placed there. His skin would have been burned and broken. His bones would have been aching and hurt. And in the midst of all of the agony that he would have been experiencing in this moment, he looked ahead to Jesus, and he saw his future with him, and nothing else mattered. The only words he could utter are, come, Lord Jesus, come. And here we are in the world that we live in, and we too look ahead in the future, anticipating Jesus coming back. And our hearts together long for that moment when we see him face to face. We are filled daily with the anticipation of his return, and we join John in the chorus of, come, Lord Jesus, Come, this Advent season, 
Check your anticipation and let it fill you with joy as we await the coming of our King. Come, Lord Jesus. Come.